This lesson deals with the maximum efficiency theorem. You can find these notes in the ECE 201 ebook in chapter 3 starting on page 67. Consider the following example where I've got one voltage source and three resistances. What value of R sub L would result in the maximum power being transferred to R sub L? Also, what will be the value of that power? And lastly, what's the efficiency of the circuit? In other words, what's the power out over the power in? There's some interesting things going on here. One way we could solve this problem is to thevenize this part of the circuit, and we would get the theven in voltage and theven in resistance, and then we'd use that theven in resistance to pick R sub L, and then we could also then calculate the voltage across R sub L, and then eventually the efficiency. So remove the load, and find the voltage across the open circuit. Since I have the same current in these two resistances, I can use the voltage divider rule. 150 ohms over 30 plus 150 times 12 is my value of the open circuit voltage or the Thevenin voltage, and that turns out to be 10 volts. I'll set all the independent sources equal to zero, and then look back in terminals A and B. Well, there's only one source here, it's a voltage source, so we short circuit that, and then look back into the terminals, and we see 30 in parallel with 150. So the product over the sum would give me the value of R Thevenin, and that turns out to be 25 ohms. Now if I pick R sub L to equal R Thevenin, then I get the most power to R sub L. So at 25 ohms here, I'll have a voltage divider of a half. The voltage I have across here then is 5 volts, and the power then would be 5 squared divided by 25, and that turns out to be 1 watt. Now there's also 5 volts across here. The voltage squared divided by the resistance would be the power dissipated in that resistance, and that would be 1 watt also. And our voltage source then is absorbed being a minus 2 watts. Or you could say that it's generating 2 watts. Now let's find the efficiency. Let's go back to our original circuit now. Now I've thevenized this and I found the voltage here is 5 volts. Now, that's still true, but now I want to put back in the original circuit. I need to find the current now. It's flowing in this resistance, which is actually coming out of the 12 volt source, so I can calculate the power out over the power in. 12 volts here and 5 volts here leaves me with 7 here. So 7 divided by 30 would be the current in the resistance, which would be 233 milliamps. So multiplying that by the 12 volts, I get 2.8 watts being generated by this battery but I'm absorbing here one watt. And so my efficiency is the ratio of those two times 100%. And that turns out to be 35.7%. This is quite different than the Thevenin equivalent circuit since I have half the voltage across the load and half across the Thevenin resistance, and so my efficiency is 50%. So a very different idea here in terms of the Thevenin equivalent and the actual circuit itself. Again, the equivalent circuit produces the same effect here, but this is a very different circuit than the Thevenin equivalent. This leads us to another idea called the Maximum Efficiency Theorem. Let me state it. A source with an adjustable Thevenin resistance, called R Thevenin, has maximum power transfer and maximum efficiency to R sub L when R Thevenin is equal to zero. Now what's different here is that I'm adjusting this, not to get the most power in this, but to get the most power in this. So it's a very different set of conditions than we had previously. What's the power in the load? Well, it's gonna be equal to current that flows, squared times the resistance. So the current that's flowing is V Thevenin divided by the total resistance here. So I'm going to square that and multiply that by R sub L. Power that's coming in here, I could also calculate with the voltage times the current, but I can also do this. I could take the voltage here and then square it and divide by the total resistance that it sees. And that would be V Thevenin squared over R Thevenin plus R sub L. So what I want to do now is I want to maximize the ratio of these two quantities. I could do it with the second derivative test again, but let's take a look at what we're looking at here. The most power that I can get to this load is when I get V Thevenin right across it. So the most power I can get out is when R Thevenin is equal to zero. That's one way to argue that that's the value that I need to get, but I can also take the ratio and show you the same thing. So the power to the load is this term. I'll put that here. Power generated is this term. Multiply that by 100%, so that's my efficiency in percent. I get some things canceling here. I get this cancels with this and one of these cancels with this. And I just have RL over R Thevenin plus R sub L. Let's divide numerator and denominator by R sub L. I want up getting one over R Thevenin over R sub L plus one times 100%. Now, if we want to maximize this term, we have two possibilities. We could have this term being zero due to R Thevenin being zero, or R sub L equal to infinity. But if R sub L is equal to infinity, we have no power going into R sub L. So the only one that would be here applicable would just be R Thevenin equal to zero. So we could prove that this is the case without taking the derivatives. Now sometimes it's not possible to get R Thevenin equal to zero, but if you keep the ratio very small, 
then your efficiency is very high. But if you can control the value of R thevenin, make it equal to zero. Take a look at a technique in chapter four using feedback. We're going to do something very close to that. Now, are there cases where you would want maximum power transfer but not maximum efficiency and vice versa? And the answer is yes. We want to maximize power transfer in those applications where voltage or current is conveying information. This would be wireless radio and television. We're actually going to take a look at this idea in a later course, BCE 404, where we design what are called matching networks to get the most power from an antenna or into an antenna. Now, there is a place where you don't want to get maximum power transfer, and that's actually your wall outlet. If you do match the load to the resistance seen back into your wall outlet, you would actually cut the voltage in half, and most appliances wouldn't work. Here's an example that might illustrate some of those ideas. I measured the resistance of a hairdryer, found that it was about 9 ohms. Now there's a heating element in there, there's also a small motor, but mostly dominated by the heating element. And then I tried to estimate the amount of resistance I had in the wires in my walls, going back to the power pole. Assuming that I had about 100 feet of 12 gauge wire and that I had a much thicker wire coming into the house. Or this is typically 3 gauge wire. Here's my effective Thevenin resistance. Again, if I were to make my load the same value as this, I would have half the line voltage. The line voltage is about 170 volts sine times 2 pi 60 times t. So here's my voltage divider again, 9 ohms over 9.725 times the line voltage, using about 157 volts times the same sine wave. The voltage drops from 170 volts peak to 157 volts peak. If the wall outlet where the hairdryer is plugged in is also tied to the lights in the room, you might notice that the lights dim when you turn the hairdryer on because you're dropping the voltage from 170 volts peak to 157 volts. But if you were to match this to here, you would drop the voltage in half. And again, you wouldn't want to do that in an appliance. Just some of the ideas related to maximum efficiency.